They're six for 16 on third down tries. Here's another one right here. Salopec Winman hit in the backfield. Wow. And he felt that when Jacoby Winman got him this time. What football means to me is, is my pride and joy. And I'll kind of use it like as an escape. Being from the city of New Orleans, is, it's not easy. Ida, one of the strongest hurricanes on record to hit Louisiana. The state's third major hurricane in just over a year. 100 lives lost to violence in 124 days. When I play the game, it's just more of like a sense of relief. With a play fake, steps to his left and tries to throw it, batted down by Jacoby Winman. I actually enjoy waking up every day and doing what I do. I love football, and I thank God for him putting me in the position I am today. It was kind of tough growing up where I was from. People being distractions, being in the wrong crowd, wrong place at the wrong time, a lot of violence. It was pretty rough. I know they seen a lot of different things. I was involved in criminal activity as well, but I never brought it to the front door. It's so easy to get sucked into this street life and because you got so many influences, every which way you turn, there's something right there that you see it firsthand. I did what I had to do to raise them like in the neighborhood, a lot of violence, a lot of drugs, you know what I'm saying? I always talk to them about having their own mind, like don't follow what you see, do what you want to do with yourself. It's hard because you see a lot at such a young age. It kind of just puts you in one of those positions like, this is not where I want to be. The person who got me into football was my brother, Isaiah Wingman. We always been pretty competitive growing up in the household. We used to play a lot of the crazy games, like throwing the ball on the roof, see who catch it first. Uh, we used to go around playing, throw up tackle and stuff, like outside in the grass, like backyard football. Like, I'll never forget that day when we was rolling the ball on the roof, and then my mom pulled up and said, let's go sign y'all up for Pee Wee football. Yeah, I'm about to take all this energy and put it somewhere else. So I brought him to the park. Jacoby started playing football at the age of six. We just started playing and, like, got acquainted with the sport real fast. Coaches liked us. We got right into football. Like, it's just something that just came natural to us. From high school, pretty much as a freshman, you know, I had inspirations of being a quarterback. Coach Brandon Jordan, we met pretty much in like my freshman year, but he always wanted me to come play defense. Man, when I first seen Jacoby, I just seen a big athlete. He was always a big kid. His brother played safety on the team also, and they had an athletic gene. Jacoby Windman cannot be taken down by mere arm tackles. He shakes off two defenders and outruns another before being taken down in the red zone. We used to go to the park outside of high school. We would go to the neighborhood playground. We All we had was a trash can and some cones, man. Hey, I'll get to his hip. There you go, good. Hey. Hey. He was new with D-line, and he would just learn the position, so it was about any means necessary, we would get better. I took it seriously. As my senior year came, it kind of became a thing for me to be a defensive guy. I probably received about eight scholarships. 321 yards in receiving and three touchdowns. Decided to go to UNLV because I felt like that was the best choice for my opportunity at the time. I just wanted to have a different experience and a part of that was I didn't want to be close to home because I know how home could get. I said, Jacoby, don't be scared to leave. So I said, I ain't scared to leave. Dude went straight to Vegas, Nevada. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So I was all for when he made the move. I mean, it, it didn't matter where he went, we was gonna come and support him regardless. UNLV, oh, he did great. But Witness says, no, I'm coming New Orleans style. I had all my food yesterday. I'm ready to go get you, baby. He stood out, and not just about football, man, just as a person. Every time I spoke with a coach, telling me how respectful he is, how humble he is, you know, you raise a good son. I feel like it was like a humbling experience. It just made him hungry. Cause like now he's showing y'all he in a better conference and he's still doing what he was doing at UNLV. The hurricane that I remember going through is probably Hurricane Ida. Hurricane Ida making landfall in Southeast Louisiana as a powerful category four storm. No power, no water, no like food really, cause no no places was open, and it just was kind of just you know your family. 
that particular moment brought us even closer together because that's when we really realized, you know, even more that we only got each other. It was almost as scary as Hurricane Katrina, but not as scary as Hurricane Katrina. It, it was rough. It was hard, disgusting. Everybody agitated, aggravated. It was just no lights for what, like 14, 15 days. Boy, did Ida leave its mark on Louisiana. Thousands and thousands are without power this morning. Just doing something as simple as just playing cards, you know, with a candle right there. It was just one of those moments that it just felt so real because you're like, we in this position, but you know, now what? But that's what we did to occupy our time. We'll play games, you know, we'll play cards, which is his favorite, just to keep people up in spirit. Like, that's what I love about Jacoby too. He's a very good spirited person. Like, you know, he's not gonna let you be down in spirit. It was pretty challenging. But now that I look back, you grow from it. You go face adversity, but what you gonna do after that? The process of me wanting to transfer was just pretty much, you know, I just wanted a better opportunity for me and my future. I spent three years at my old school. That was the ultimate thing. I wanted to challenge myself and see how far I could go. See, I told him, when you hit this transfer portal, like, you gonna see. This, this recruit process is going to open up for you. You're going to get that experience. So I was real happy for him. One of the bigger reasons why I chose MSU because the culture here is great. Here we go, Spartans. Here we go. When I came on my visit, they welcomed me in with open arms. MSU is a great school. Just taking that leap, you know, that's what it's all about. I believe Jacoby C and another coach coming in trying to take a leap. At that time in his life, he was willing to take a leap to do better and gain better, you know, to push him closer to his goal. He can do a lot. He's a versatile athlete. You know, he's really tough. He has a nose for the ball. He brings a lot to the table. I'm so glad that he's here. Third and 18 at the 23. Tyler's back in the game at running back. Salapak. Being pressured, nice and he there. sacked. They got him around the ankle. The sack from Jacoby Winman. My first sack as a Spartan, man, it just, it felt great. The first thought that came to my head is like, man, look how far you came, like, look how much you grew. I was at work watching the game. I'm over at UPS, I'm at work. Everybody keep coming there looking because I'm screaming now. I'm like, what's going on here? What's going on? I'm like, man, my brother making plays. I'm happy for him. A week before the game. I said, man, all I need is four tackles and two sacks. The last four minutes, he gave me that four tackle. And he shakes away and dives forward. Again. I left the stadium. I got what I want. I'm fine. I walked to the car. <laughs> I'm out there waiting on him. Like, I'm here. I'm here. And this is what is going down. This is how it's going down. Wimon walks in the door as a leader. He loves football. He didn't wait to be a leader on our team. And I really respect that. I mean, coming in out of the portal and walking in the door and immediately stepping up as a leader, I mean, I have a lot of respect for that. Everything we do, fast, physical, focus. Let's get it. Seeing us both here at the same time and both doing great things is, is kind of giving me chills, man. People say we can't make it from there, that all you go end up dead or in jail. And, and that we here, we at East Lansing, and playing in the Big Ten is it, just a blessing. Just to see a young black brother coming from where, we, where we're at. Like, I'm still here in New Orleans, still in the same struggling neighborhood, still in New Orleans, and to see him come as far as he came, like, you know, it's, it's beyond measures. Outside the football, proud. Never had to run to jail. Name never was caught up in foolishness. All you have to do, stay focused, keep God first, and sky's the limit. My family, they have the biggest influence on me. They my why, man. Just seeing how hard they work, just try to give back in my way by playing football, seeing how far football will take me, and then I take care of them. It's not easy growing up in the city of New Orleans. That particular city, man, is just like, it's one of those cutthroat cities. I believe you grow from each moment. You gotta conquer and overcome, and you gotta face adversity, but it's all about how you finish.
I didn't really know what to think, you know, because it there was a lot of emotions going on. Obviously, um, I think I had a lot of regret instantly. We were expecting big things from him just because of his junior year. He was doing so well, and I thought, oh boy, this senior year is going to be something really fantastic. And when that all came to a screeching halt, it was um, devastation. I think he was in shock. He was in so much pain that he wasn't really thinking about what was next. I started playing sports when I was like four, I think. Hockey was the first sport I played. I played a little bit of baseball in there too, and obviously track and cross country later on. But for the most part, it was hockey from when I was four till I was 18. We didn't really push sports on him. We tried to get him involved in lots of different things and let him try whatever. I had season tickets to the Red Wings and one of the perks was you got to go skate on the ice at Joe Lewis. So my husband and I would take him and we each held his hand and next thing I know, he was probably two and a half and he let go of us and he just took off. I don't wanna say I was really good at it, but I was decent at it enough to where I could play pretty competitive and I was one of the better guys on the team, so that made it more fun. As he grew older, though, he knew that he needed to stay in shape because hockey was, you know, taking up a lot of his energy and he just didn't have the stamina to keep playing. So he thought, let me start running. My seventh grade math teacher was good friends with my parents and she also happened to be the cross country coach. Her name was Miss Lacrosse. She got me to join cross country in eighth grade. I don't know if I really enjoyed the running part of cross country, but I definitely enjoyed the competition of it. We encourage our kids to do whatever they are passionate about. If they want to do something, they want to try something, we're behind them 100%. And that's kind of how it was with John. He wanted to run. We said, hey, it's a great way to get in shape for the hockey season. Absolutely. Go ahead and run. I think my junior year of high school is when it really hit me that I could be good at running. I had a teammate, Jack Blybtree, who was a year above me, and he was really good. So I was starting to keep up with him a little bit. We were starting to do really well in meets, and my coach talked about going to like nationals after the season and stuff, and that's when it kind of hit me that I could be good at this. I remember him running at the regional championships his junior year. I was actually recruiting some other guys at that meet, watching guys compete, and I saw this guy from Wald Lake Western. The thing that stood out the most was that he was a competitor, and that's what I really liked. Our hockey team would play kind of like club in the fall, and so we'd have games throughout the year. In the middle of my senior year, I decided to play hockey in the middle of cross country season, which was probably a dumb mistake, but I broke my femur in one of the games. Um, so that meant I couldn't run for the rest of the cross country season. Cut off half my hockey season too, because by the time I got back from injury, it was like January. There was a lot of instant regret that turned into how can we get better from this? Because obviously now I had a leg that didn't work and I had to kind of get through that rehab and all that stuff. And I knew that there was still half a hockey season and all of track season that I could get back to. So I think more of my mind shifted from regret to how can I get better for the last couple weeks of my seasons here. The focus on, on rehab, and this is his last chance, was tremendous. He was very focused, looks very competitive, trying to get back and pushing it as hard as he could. And uh, his timeline to, for his rehab was very short. It kind of hit me probably four weeks after that I probably wouldn't be running in college. And I actually, I was gonna go to Western Michigan and just be an engineering student. And then Coach Simonow called me in December after not talking for a couple weeks and I figured he wasn't interested anymore because a lot of other coaches weren't interested. And he was like, no, I'm still interested. Like, we want to get you out here for a visit. I'm someone that doesn't like to close doors. You never know what somebody's going to turn into. I really liked what I saw at that regional meet his junior year. And I thought he was somebody who had some ability. I was willing to continue to pursue it, see how it went, see if he was interested. I came on a visit. I liked it instantly really fell in love with the campus and stuff. And I really liked that he 
kept taking a chance with me and I committed here almost instantly. Coming into fall of my freshman year here, nothing was right. Um, running still hurt, and they were trying to make me run more than I could, basically. Um, so it was a lot of, it was a little bit of a process there. Physically, John was everything we thought he would be. Really talented, looked really good running, and you could tell that there was a lot of ability there. From a, a personality standpoint and from a kind of knowing what he was getting himself into, I think he was pretty lost. He was a hockey player who just joined one of the most competitive distance groups in the country and was trying to see if he could make it as a distance runner. We're gonna run aggressively, you gotta do it with a calm manner. Coach Dreinth called me in his office a couple times, asked if I really wanted to run in college because it didn't seem like I was into it. It was definitely hard for me to admit that I was still dealing with stuff from my injury, especially because they had recruited me thinking that I was back to normal and I didn't want to just tell them like I'm not. and I. Maybe was a little afraid of getting cut or something. I don't know what was really my thought there, but I definitely had a hard time with that. There were a lot of growing pains going from someone who played hockey half the year and ran a little bit in the spring. There was gonna be an adjustment period, so it took him a while to kind of get used to the way we do things here and, and running year round. So in the beginning, he struggled a little bit. For me, it was one of those things with John where you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And so I had a bunch of conversations with him about trying to help him realize his potential, help him see what was there, and then connect the dots of what he was doing versus what he needed to do to be successful. The big thing Coach Simmons stressed to me was accountability and that I need to hold myself accountable for what I'm doing. And I started training more. I started training with a purpose more. And I think that really brought out some better races, and once I started racing better, it just got more fun. Obviously it's been fantastic. Like this is what we, we build these guys up towards. This is kind of the potential that I saw in him for the past few years. And it was fun to see him take training seriously over Christmas break and come in fit and working out well and running down Morgan or trying to run down Morgan in workouts from basically the end of the indoor season all the way through outdoors at nationals. He was just a different guy and it was just a, a lot of fun to see that progress. The growth I've seen from John over the last seven years is tremendous. He went from having a broken leg to this phenomenal athlete that can run miles and miles and miles at a really fast pace. It's just extraordinary how much he's come in the last seven years. If I could go back and talk to a younger me, I think I would just tell him to trust the process. Things are going to get tough, things are going to be frustrating, but in the end it's all going to work out one way or another. So just have fun with what you're doing, enjoy it, and trust that it's going to work out. Tonight, Michigan State Madness, this is a basketball opportunity, this is a basketball school, and no season felt right without this night. So thank you guys for coming out. There is no better fan base in the country than Michigan State. 2000, 
was the last time a Big Ten team won the national championship. So I say, why not us? We need all of you. This is a family here. And in a couple of weeks, the wars begin. Let's get this thing rolling, all right, this year? Everybody, let's get this thing rolling.